So for this problem, you are given a constant vector field, f, x, y, z, is equal to 0, 0, negative 1. Uh, and what you're asked is to find the flux of f through a surface m, which I will draw for you in just a moment. And m is the bottom hemisphere of radius 3 centered around the origin with um, a disk on top to cap it off. So I'm going to start by drawing that out. Uh, so here I have drawn um, that surface m, and we are going to be using the standard um, outward point. So I'm going to draw some normal vectors to this. Uh, for this question, um, I'm going to divide this surface into two parts. I'm going to look at it um, as a disk and a hemisphere. And uh, when I do this, I'm going to calculate the flux through both pieces separately, and then I'm going to add them at the end, and that is going how I'm going to get my answer. Okay, so to do this, I'm going to be using this definition given um, by the textbook um, for flux um, integral, and I'm going to apply that to first the disk. So what we have is uh, this double integral here, and I'm going to start by plugging in um, the vector that we were given, the vector field. And next, I'm going to note that um, this normal vector for a disk um, that is perpendicular to the z-axis, we can say that the normal vector here is just k, because um, these k vectors that point upward are perpendicular, always normal, to this disk. So um, k is equal to 0, 0, 1. And then for ds, this is a flat, uh, flat disk sorry, um, with a constant z. We can just put da for um, ds. So carrying out that dot product is very, very simple. Uh, and this is what you get from that. And this is very simply an area integral um, for a disk. And what that's going to give is just uh, negative times the area of that disk. And of course, it is radius 3. And so that makes it very simply negative 9 pi, because we all know pi r squared is the area of a disk. Uh, so for that, we have this first piece. We have negative 9 pi um, newton meter squared. I'll write that off to the side. Okay, so for the second piece, I'm going to look at the hemisphere. And um, it is the same integral. I will label it with hemi for hemisphere. Um, and I will note um, that it's the same vector field. So for v, we can put in the same thing. Uh, next, I'm going to realize the normal vector for this hemisphere, if you look at it over here. Um, it's going to be basically rho, the unit rho vector, the normal, uh, the, the vector rho. And this is also equal to x, y, z, divided by the radius. Um, this is discussed in a previous uh, section of the book, if you want to see more about it. Um, but basically, uh, we're going to use spherical coordinates for this part, and we're also going to note that the radius of this hemisphere um, is 3. Uh, so I'm going to plug this in for the normal vector, and then I'm going to transfer it into spherical coordinates in just a moment. And uh, the D surface um, discussed in, I believe, example 3.11.4. Um, this has gone over, um, but ds is simply for a sphere, it's r squared sine phi, uh, r squared sine phi d, d theta, and I'm going to plug in r in just a moment, uh, so for now. I've written that down, and once we evaluate that, we will have our answer. Uh, so carrying out the dot product is very simple because we have 0, 0, negative 1, and that's just going to be dotted with this x, y, z divided by r, and then um, and r will cancel with that r, uh, and I will show you what we get. Uh, and here I'm going to note that um, z in spherical coordinates is just given by capital R uh, cosine of phi. I'm going to plug that in. So as a result, we get negative r squared cosine phi, sine phi, d theta, d phi. I have switched the limits of integration. It um, doesn't really matter, but um, makes the math slightly easier later on. But anyway, 
Uh, R, we said earlier, we were given that uh, radius of 3. So this turns into 9. Uh, and next, I'm going to observe the limits of integration. So um, get this nice double integral. So theta, uh, since we're going all around, uh, theta is going to go from 0 to 2 pi. Since we are looking at the bottom hemisphere uh, over here, we know that phi is going to go from pi over 2 to pi. So now I will start by evaluating um, this first inner integral, uh, d theta. So with d theta, yeah. Uh, so then we get this um, very simply. What that turns into is um, just taking 2 pi, plugging it in, 0, plugging it in. So from that, we will get. We'll get negative 18 pi, cosine phi, sine phi, uh, d phi. Um, and next, I'm going to do u substitution to make this a little easier to do. Uh, I'm going to substitute for u equal to sine phi. Uh, which would make du equal to cosine phi d phi. And the limits of integration are going to change. So um, what that will do. So u is equal to sine phi. So when phi is equal to pi over 2, um, u is then going to be 1. And when phi is equal to pi, um, you plug that in over there, u is going to be equal to 0. Uh, and right here, I like to, I'd like to simplify this a little further um, by switching uh, the limits and getting rid of this negative sign. Uh, next, I'm going to plug in u and du. So, uh, cosine phi d phi is taken up, quote unquote, by uh, du, and then u is going to be taken by the sine phi. Uh, so suddenly, with that u substitution, this integral becomes very easy to solve. So, uh, very simply, um, just 18 pi u squared over 2, evaluate it from 0 to 1, plug that in, and you will get 9 pi newton meter squared. And that is for the hemisphere, and for the disk, we evaluated that earlier. We got negative 9 pi newton meter squared, and you get your final result by adding both of those, and very simply, negative 9 pi plus 9 pi uh, will give you your final result of 0 meter squared. Uh, 